Now, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And it's now time for Today in History, the segment on The Breakfast where we share with you major events that shaped that world. And I'm going back to the year 2020, May 26, 2020. Now, on this day in history, uh, the social media platform Twitter, you know, slapped a warning label to Donald Trump's false tweets for the first time. Now, Donald Trump had been notorious for tweeting things that were fact-checked and proven to be false, but Twitter, you know, didn't really take action on it. You know, but it was the first time on this day in history that Twitter put a warning label, say, this tweet contains misinformation, basically alerting people on Twitter to say, you know, you need to be informed that there is misinformation, falsehood, on these tweets, you know, but uh, Twitter did not take the tweet away. They said it will still leave the tweet so it can be accessible. But basically, in, in the tweets, uh, Donald Trump was um, voicing his opinion about mail in ballot. He's saying, uh, you know, when there are mail in ballots, it will lead to a rigged election. And we know why, because, you know, majorly because of the coronavirus pandemic and the fact that the US election must go on. So they said we're going to use mail in ballots, but Donald Trump said this is going to lead to corruption. You can see the tweet there. He says there is no way that mailing ballots will be used uh, for the elections without uh, an ether of corruption coming in. You know, he basically alleged that the uh, election was being stolen from him. You know, that the votes cannot be counted after the polls. You know, so, you know, we know about Donald Trump and his very controversial views about things regarding the election, especially even when the election results were out and he showed that, you know, Joe Biden was leading. Trump still insisted that the votes should be counted in states. So in many states, the election results or, you know, the, the, the polls were counted, the votes were counted many times because Donald Trump insisted that there was no way he must have lost out, you know, on those states. So Trump really caused a lot of a lot of stare during his presidency. So uh, Twitter just had to put a lead on it to say, hey, guys, there's falsehood on the streets on this day in history. Well, some people miss Donald Trump um, and the uh, chaos. Do you and miss the, Donald Trump? Uh, well, I, I, I think I, I don't think I do. I think I, you know, I was I'm already used to the, you know, there's certain you know, expectations of, you know, a person who holds the seat of the United States president, you know, and he moved too far away from that. So, you know, it was exciting for some people, you know, people, so, you know, you're going against the norms, you know, you're, you know, you're, you know, breaking the glass ceiling, you know, whatever, all those terms <laughs> that he used for it. Um, but for me, it was just too much, you know, and there was a lot of things, you know, that he also did that, you know, for, if it was a, you know, another president, if, you know, they would have been dragged, you know, down completely, but, he, he had he, fans. He had a he strong, had, yeah, exactly. strong fan base. You know, and he was, he, all those things were ignored. You know, he continued to tell lies, continued to exaggerate, continued to you know, make false uh, statements here and there. It was just a lot of things that were very, very unpresidential um, that you know, can, could not just be ignored, but they ignored them for him. Um, so no, I don't. Uh, I mean, I remember back to when you know Donald Trump was still president of the U.S. and you have stations, you know, st international stations, who just do features where they analyze his tweets and say, in tweets that Donald Trump has put out from January to March, just three months, Donald Trump lied hundred yeah. times and begin to put out all the misinformation, all the falsehood, all the fake news. Yeah. And funny enough, Donald Trump basically popularized the word fake news because whatever story is being put out that doesn't suit him, fake news. It's all yeah. fake news on social media. Yeah. That's you know, and um, you know, his, his time there also uh, gave rise to, you know, like you said, they are fans, you know, but there's, you know, those who took advantage of it, you know, the white supremacists, you know, the um, um, there's a word that, um, what's his name now? Um, some guy I listen to, you know, always calls them, um, Vanilla Ice. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, he, he gave rise to a lot of those, you know, white supremacists to feel like it was time for them to take back their country and, you know, and, um, you know, commit some of all those crimes. Racism, you know, was, you know, was on, on levels that it probably hadn't been in a very, very long time. Um, and so no, um, no, I don't. Um, no, you don't miss it. No, I don't. Okay. Anyway, um, still in the U.S., um, for those who remember, in 1995, there was something called the Oklahoma City bombing. Um, I remember this very well because I think it was sometime in, you know, late 90s or early 2000s. Early 2000s, How old you know, were I had you, uh, uh, old enough. 
uh, I had gone through, you know, I was on YouTube, playing around YouTube, and I saw something called the, um, a guy called Timothy McVeigh. I think it was on, on TV, the story of Timothy McVeigh. He, you know, carried out the Oklahoma City bombing. Um, it was a bombing that took place on the 19th of um, um, April in 1995 and claimed the lives of 168 people. Um, um, you know, he was a U.S. veteran who, of course, was angry with the United States because of a, an incident that happened a couple of years earlier and decided that the way that he wanted to send a message was to retaliate by bombing, you know, that building. Um, and, of course, in working also in, um, you know, with um, some guy called uh, Terry Lean Nichols, who, of course, is the focus of our conversation this morning. Mm -hmm. um, it was on this day that Terry Lee Nichols was found guilty of the 161 murder charges for helping out carry out the Oklahoma City bombing. Um, it, you know, like I said, it led to the loss of 168 lives. Uh, the, about 16 blocks, you know, of, um, you know, buildings were damaged. Um, half of the building... Um, it was, um, what's the name of the building? I can't remember the what. Alfred the Alfred P. Mora, P. Mora Federal, building. Yeah, Federal Building in Oklahoma City. Um, was um, Three quarters of the building was completely damaged. And he was caught, funny enough, about 90 minutes after the bombing occurred um, um, for driving with a broken tail light, I believe, and then uh, illegal possession of weapons. You know, he was, it was just a random arrest uh, for Timo, uh, Timothy McVeigh. It wasn't actually because you know, the bombing was investigated and he was found. No, mm -hmm. it was a random arrest um, by a police officer who noticed that his uh, tail light was broken and he was driving w with, a, with a weapon. And you know, from there, you know, investigations continued. Uh, they traced some of the forensics to the person who was arrested just 90 minutes after the bombing, and that's how he was arrested. Mm. In 2001, um, Timothy McVeigh was um, executed by lethal injection. Um, and um, the other guy, uh, t um, Nichols now, I was sentenced to 161 life sentences for being an accomplice uh, to uh, the Oklahoma City bombing. Mm. Um, yeah, that's it. You know, 161 life sentences, you'll never get out of jail. Oh, forever, my God. Never, never. Several infants were killed yeah. during this. And uh, the story of a nurse, she was rushing to help someone, and then the debris fell on her and she died. Mm. You know, so um, re reading about this, this story, and I found that the FBI just so they can have enough evidence to prosecute the ones that had facts not to beat um, a confession out of you they had <laughs> twenty eight thousand interviews yeah. Yeah. do you know what it means to have twenty eight thousand interviews it means it, it it means having the resources and actually making use of the resources that 28, are provided thousand interviews as the federal bureau of investigation and they compiled seven thousand pound of evidence so you can't, you can't, you can't wrangle out of that. Yeah. There's no going out of it. They have you by the head. They have you by the, they have you by everywhere. Absolutely. You know, and once again, you know, it, it, it tells of a system that works and a system that is properly funded and a system that is, um, you know, I wouldn't say completely corrupt free, but at least, you know, lives up to expectations. Mm -hmm. um, if they are going to, you know, investigate, imagine we had the FBI or something close to the FBI that truly lived up to it, the expectations and the funding that was provided for it here in Nigeria. We will not be talking about ongoing non known men, you know, today. We wouldn't be having this conversation because those guys would have been caught a long time True. ago. And we cannot in Nigeria say, in all honesty, that we do not have the slightest idea. The DSS, the, the um, uh, police, you know, the SSS, all of them, um, the... Um, What's this agency called? In, in other investigation ag agents, NIE and the rest of them, do not have the slightest idea mm -hmm. who are the people you know, committing these crimes in, in the southeast and across Nigeria. It is not in any well, way possible. We've heard reports about sometimes you know, collaboration between these unknown gunmen and, you know, so... Yeah, you know, so, so that exists, you know, and we would say, you know, we would say, okay, those are just cons conspiracy theories until we have had, you know, proof. But it makes no sense to anywhere in the world that mm -hmm. after months... We still do not have any idea where these people are, who they are, who's funding them, who's giving them weapons. And not just the ungone known men now. I'm talking including the, the bandits. Men. Well, I'll call them ungone known men. Um, <laughs> because they, they are known. <laughs> like they were like Mugula said, Sorry, they are yeah, known. Please. So they are the ungone known <laughs> men. Um, we cannot say that we do not have any idea who these people are. Um, for this long. It's not possible. State governors, I'm sure, have a, have a clue. State commissioners mm. of police, of course, have a clue. Every time we always brag and say, oh, when the Nigerian police wants, wants to walk, they will walk. You know, when you, when you have a robbery and they really want to investigate, they will investigate. Give them, you know, a week or two weeks and they will find the, the suspect. And we, Nigerians brag about things like that every now and then. How come 
when it's time so why for do you us pick to and choose exactly how how when you want to make Nigeria safe. Exactly. When do you pick why do you pick and choose when you want to make Nigerians proud of your services? How is it possible that these crimes have been committed for so long? And it includes, once again, the banditry, it includes the kidnapping, it includes the, you know, Boko Haram and all of that. How is it that in a decade... Analyzing these issues over and over again without, you know, well, any headway... You know, the FBI around. can be criticized. Just, the United States yeah. security agencies and, you know, criminal justice system, you know, every now and then will have its own criticism, um, including 9-11. There's people who said, you know, it was an inside job. There's, there's so much of all of that. But um, they at every time when it was necessary, I've been able to use the resources that have been made available mm -hmm. to them, the funding that has been made available to them, they're properly funded, I believe, to solve crimes. And that's how Timothy Vagbe was was. Um, was Please don't mention that found. funding issue because even though we can see it on paper, I told you I have been at seminars where heads of security agencies were and they'll tell you how most of them, they buy fuel for the you know, police van from their own pockets. Whose fault? So is that? don't, don't, let's not even Whose fault? go there. Do they, please. Do they, aren't they aware that billions are released every year for the police? Has That's any what of we're them saying. Where is the money going to? Has any of them complained? Don't we also hear of, of Complain people and say get that? Sacked? Don't, well, sadly. Don't we also hear, you know, when people say that, you know, the checkpoints that are, you know, across the country are all just, you know, raising money to give to whoever it is that is DPO, DPO also makes some, whose, yeah. um, um, you know, contribution Who to assistance, you know, yeah. whoever, commissioner, commissioner gathers his own and gives to They have a percentage, you must remit every day. Yeah, so not my fault, you know, because they all know that there's a corrupt system. They all know, you know, that they all, you know, they, they all suffer the same corrupt mm. system. So, That's why when you go report a crime, they'll ask you to bring money for fuel, for recharge card, for investigation. I remember. For bio, for statement, yeah. for this, for that. I remember Sheon yeah. Kuti. We've we'll spent some more time on this. I remember Sheon Kuti, you know, in one of the videos during the NSAS protest when, you know, someone was suggesting that we should make Donate money for the police, and he said, and uh, he said, he made a statement saying, "I don't know how to speak Yoruba, but I remember it very well because he said, Yalaya police." Uh, <laughs> I hope that's not police. an insult, though. Oh, sorry, I don't know what it is. <laughs> what he cracked me up so bad. He was, he was like, "Yalaya police donation with police salary." What's his business with that? If they don't like the job, they should quit. Anyway. Timothy McVeigh um, was um, um, killed by lethal injection, executed rather in 2001. Terry Lee Nichols was given 161 life sentences, and it all took place on this day in 2004 when he was found guilty of uh, being an accomplice to the Oklahoma City bombing. Mm, and I told you about how Twitter slammed a warning label on tweets by Donald Trump on this day in history in 2020. That's it for you, and that's it from us on Today in History. We'll take a break to return with our conversation yesterday. Lots of accusation against Ned Nwoko, Prince Ned Nwoko, that he's been, you know, stealing people's land, arresting them, and using law enforcement agencies to perpetrate those. But we heard from his spokesman yesterday saying these are all lies. Let's uh, pick up where we stopped yesterday. Do stay with us. <laughs>